Okay, so I know there's a lot of buyers out there wondering what happens when they write their offer and they send their offer in to go get accepted in a multiple offer situation. So I'm sure a lot of you have been through the situation where you put your best foot forward, you write an offer, you send it out, and you wonder what, what's going on. Like, how do they make their decision to pick a certain offer, which is often the highest. So I have my little prop here. This is Iris, my daughter. The, she's going to be the seller. So I'm going to show you what happens when I go into a listing um, an offer presentation when I'm presenting all the offers with my sellers. So Iris is going to be the seller here um, and I have all the 10 offers in my hand right here. We're going to go with an example of a house that's probably worth $390 but is listed at $299 so it's underlisted. This happens a lot in our marketplace like a lot. Most of the houses are being underlisted now to drive a lot of action. So it's worth $390 it's listed at $299. So I walk in with the 10 offers in my hand or we're doing this over the phone and I have all the 10 offers sent to their email. So we have 10 of them, right? So I'll show you guys right here what it kind of looks like. So we'll have, there's always, a, this is not the exact ratio. This is not a, an example at all that has existed. I'm just trying to make up something. So little fix, there you go. There you go, Iris. So you paying attention here? You got 10 offers in front of you. So here's what happens almost every time. So normally I'll come in with three stacks. I'll all already have them separated. So we go through all of them, but we'll go through the first stack quick. So the first stack out of the 10 offers, there's usually about five of them that are 308, 312, 302, 301. So they're just above the 299 list price. And what I'm, the conversation I'm having with my sellers is these five people are probably new shoppers. They don't understand the market yet at all. So they're coming in low, they think they have a chance, just a little bit over asking, but in this marketplace, if you don't know the value of a home, it, it doesn't matter. So this stack automatically goes to the side, and, and I'm sure you've heard of the people that are writing personal letters. Most often, I'm gonna tell you, the personal letters don't get read by these lower offers. Um, some, some of my sellers, they do wanna read them, cool, but it very rarely sways a decision. Then you got the stack number two. So these are ones that are a little bit more competitive. Again, these people, they don't really know the market that well. They're just, they're, in their mind, they're thinking, I'm gonna put a strong enough offer. If we get it, great. If not, whatever, we don't really care. And often these people know that they're not high enough to win the bid, but they're still trying anyways. So there's usually around three of them. So five are offers that aren't even close that people are still learning the market. There's three, so for example, 360. 351,000, 342,000. So you're 42, 51,000 above asking, which is quite a bit above asking. But if you actually know the value of this home, you know that it's 390 because you see what everything else has sold in the area. So when I'm with my sellers, we're going through that. We're looking at the conditions as well, maybe reading the letters if the sellers want to. And uh, so again, these aren't even in contention. Even though, even if you have a personal letter, these aren't even in contention but I'm gonna leave them out here. We still go through them because they're close. And then usually what happens is there's three competitive offers. So these three people, so for example, 382, really close to 390, 393, and 389. So these three people, these three offers, have really close offers. And they're actually, they know the market very well. They probably, they probably put five or six offers on other homes and started to understand what you actually have to bid. So us as realtors, we go through it all the time, so we know. And often I'm telling my clients, hey, you have to go 390 to win this house, but they're not quite ready, which is okay, and they're bidding around the 350, and it still seems like a lot because you're 50 grand above asking. But these are the three people that really understand the market and actually have a chance. So these three people are the one that we're gonna look at. So then we look at the conditions. Do they have financing condition? If they don't, it means they're a very, very strong candidate. That means they're 100% confident in their financing. And do they have an inspection? And yes, it's risky to go in without an inspection, but usually if you're being safe, your realtor is doing their job, you're doing your inspection before the offer date. So we know that these people, if they're coming in with a no conditions offer and they're, they're a little bit lower, maybe they're 389, no conditions versus 393 with a few conditions, we'd probably take the 389. Every person is different, so it all depends on the situation. But this is kind of what happens. I'm sitting here with Iris, I'm explaining all of this, but I know a lot of you are wondering, like, when there's that big of a gap between the list price and the sale price, what does the offer situation look like? Is there one person that's going 
393 and everyone else is at 301? Not at all. Not at all. Not even close. That rarely, rarely happens where there's a huge gap. There's always, always, except in certain situations, a few of people that are, that are actually competitive, that are close to the actual value of the house. So if you're one of those people that knows the market better than the other buyers, you have a huge advantage. So that's it. That's what happened behind the scenes. Thanks. Thanks, Iris, for being part of it. I love you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at any time. I hope this helps both buyers and sellers.